in this set of problems, starting at number 10, we start seeing graphs that have dotted lines in them. Uh, these dotted lines generally represent asymptotes, uh, a concept that we'll delve into a little bit more later. But basically right now, all you need to know is that those dotted lines are used basically as guides when we take a look at this graph. And so they're actually going to help us to be able to draw it right. Because otherwise, it'd be kind of tough to be able to tell where to put some of the points for this. So notice, first of all, what type of graph this is. Notice it's 1 over x that we're going to be graphing in this case. The big thing I want you to do right now with it, though, is just note that 1 over x looks like this graph. Because later on, you'll need to be able to make them yourself. But for now, we don't need to, but I kind of want to start laying some seeds that are going to uh, be able to grow later. All right, what we need to know in order to be able to make the graph that we're being asked to make down here is what is this 1 doing to f of x? Well, notice the plus 1, it is outside of the parentheses. It's not in the parentheses with x. Therefore, it's moving it up and down. And specifically, a plus 1 moves it up 1. And so what this is telling us to do is it's telling us that we're going to take this exact same graph that we saw up here and we're going to move it up one. And so that means that that dotted line that was right on the axis is now going to be up here. All right, let's go down and start our graphing process. First thing I need to do is I need to grab that shape. It's kind of a funky shape. It's kind of unique, right? It makes it a little bit easier to find down here in the buttons. It tells us that we're going to be needing to use that particular button. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to grab that and then I can now plot my point. Now notice that when I plot this first point, what it does there is it plots the point where those two dotted lines are meeting. That's not the right place, is it? I just wanted you to see how it worked there. So instead, I want that intersection to happen up one. So I'm going to put my first point up one. Now then, we need a little bit more detail. So I'm going to go back up and look at my graph up here. And I'm looking for some other point that I can plot. And one of the things that jumps out to me that I can see here is it looks like right there it's going through the point 1, 1. Just like right down here, it's going through the point negative 1, negative 1. We're going to use that to our advantage. I'm going to plot that point in order to be able to make this graph. Because you'll notice here that as I move this around, it draws in everything once I've drawn in the dotted lines and I plot just one other point. So if I know that that point is supposed to be just over one and up one, then it does the entire graph for me. So now notice the graphs are exactly the same, except that the one that I just drew has been moved up one, which is what this problem was asking us to do. So that one is now good and ready to go ahead and submit. My next problem happens to be another one of those 1 over x graphs. And so the nice part is I already know which of the graph tools to use down here. The only thing I need to do is figure out where am I going to be starting from. And so I take a look up here and I notice I have x minus 1, but the minus 1 is inside the parentheses. And when it's inside the parentheses like that, it's inside with x, which means it moves it along the x direction. Minus means it's moving to the right, and so this graph is going to be moved to the right one unit. So I go ahead and grab my tool there, and then I start going to the right one, and then I go over one, up one from there, just like I did on the last problem, and I've got it done. My next problem gives me 2 to the power of x as our definition of f of x, and you can see what the graph looks like here. It is exponential. Uh, notice again it's got that dotted line in there. Yes, that is another one of those asymptotes. And so we're going to be trying to replicate that graph down here. Well, let's go ahead and start by just noticing the shape of it. It looks like it flattens out along the left and then it gets very, very steep on the right. So I want to figure out which tool I'm going to use down below for that. And that would end up being this one. And so I want to end up using that particular tool. And just to show you the way this tool works, if I click anywhere here, you notice that that first point that I plotted, it drew in the dotted green line. And then from there, I can plot my second point. 
But it's kind of weird because notice that second point isn't doing anything. But I actually have to plot a third point here. And it glitched out a little bit there, so I'm going to try doing that again. So I first dot plots the asymptote, the dotted line. The second point doesn't do anything until I start drawing in a third point, and then you actually start seeing the graph. So notice I'm going to have to plot that dotted line and then put in two more points. So knowing that, I'm now going to go ahead and scroll up, take a look at my graph up there, and figure out what do I know about it. And of course, we can see where the dotted line is, but what points are actually included? This is a very important and useful one right here. The point zero one, where we always have a point that is just up one on the axis there. All right, from there, other points we have. We have one here that's over one and up one from there. The reason why this works is because two to the power of one, my x value, is two. And so you could start kind of actually figuring out why the graph works this way, because two to the power of two is four. So there is a point at two, four. Uh, two to the power of three, that is two times two times two, is eight. And so I have a point here at three, eight as well. So there's a total of four different points that I could very easily choose from to use. And it doesn't really matter which ones you use as long as you use two of those. All right, let's go ahead and start making our graph. In this case, we have f of x plus 5. That plus 5 is in with x, therefore it moves it in the x direction. Plus moves left, so this graph is going to be moved left 5. Otherwise, it's going to be exactly the same as the original up there. So, since I'm moving it sideways, that means that that dotted line is not going to move at all. So, I can plot that anywhere along the x-axis. It does not matter where that dot is anchored to. It only matters that it's on the x-axis here. Its height matters, not how far over it is. All right, then I need to plot one of my points. Well, I'm again going to be looking at my graph up here as reference. And I'm going to be trying to replicate this point right here. That point is going to be moved over to the left five. So it's now going to be right there. So that's where I'm going to be putting my first point. And then from there, I need one other point. I'm going to go ahead and just use this one, which notice from the first point that I plotted would just be over one and up one. So I could count that way. Or I could actually look at the graph here and count over to the left five units to see where it ends up. Either way you do it, you should be able to end up with a point right there. And so then that then gives us our graph exactly the same as the original up here, except moved over to the left five units. In my next problem now, notice that the equation that's being graphed here is log base 2 of x. So we get to see what log graph looks like. And so Really all we need to do right now is see, okay, this is what this function looks like. That log has this vertical dotted line, and it's going over to the right from there. It gets really close to the vertical line as we go down, and it gets very far away from it as we go up. I need to know that so I can find the right tool down here at the bottom. That's where you're going to want to grab that particular tool. From there, I know that this is going to be x minus 3. So that minus 3 means that it's being moved over because the minus 3 is in with x and specifically is moving to the right 3 because minus moves right and plus moves left. So I'm going to take the exact same graph as what I have up above and I'm going to move it right 3. That means then that that dotted line is going to be moving over to the right 3 and the height won't change at all for anything else. So the first thing I'm going to plot here is the dotted line, so I'm going to put that over to the right 3. And then you notice my next point is normally at 1, 0. I'm going to take that point and actually plot it over 1 and up 0. And then the next point after that, you can see up here, uh, would have been over 2 and up 1 from that uh, dotted line. 
And so if I do that same thing on this one, then I have my graph. And so then this is the graph of f of x minus 3 with the logarithm and everything. And this one's done. All right, on to the next problem. We should be able to go a little bit quicker now because everything's just variations on the theme. So I can see that I have an exponential again. So I'm going to start by going down and grabbing my exponential tool there. And then I'm graphing f of x minus 3 with the minus 3 hanging on the end, not in the parentheses. So that means it's being moved down 3. And so I'm going to want to be making sure that, that dotted line from the original graph is going to be down 3. So I start by plotting that. And then from there, my first point right on the axis is normally up 1, so I plot that. And then from there, it's over 1 and up 1 from that point. And so I have my graph that way. And then finally, we have another logarithm graph. And so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to grab the logarithm tool. And then in this case, I'm graphing f of x plus 1, where the plus 1 is outside of the parentheses, so it's going to be moving it up 1. Since it's being moved up 1, the dotted line does not move off of 0, so I'm just going to plot it there. The difference is that instead of my next point being right here, where it's over 1 and right on the x-axis, I need to move that point up 1. And then once I have that, then the next point looks like it's over 1 and up 1 from there. So then I can go ahead and grab it there. It looks like it glitched because I'm working on a touch screen. But there, that's what it should end up looking like. Uh, yes, I would not suggest you try doing these sorts of assignments on your phone. They can technically be done on your phone, but they can be quite finicky. All right, so that is this assignment then done, or at least up through this particular part of it. I'll continue the rest of it in another video.